So, good afternoon, everybody. My name is John Boyd. Uh, I'm a freelance writer. I'm a member of the Foreign Correspondents Club. We have to apologize. Um, the person who is going to moderate here, there was a mix up and he wasn't able to attend. So, a very short notice, I was asked to do the moderation. So, um, please excuse me if I make this very brief. Actually, I was at JAXA about six months ago. Uh, I was a member of the group of press people that went out there, and uh, I saw some of the satellites that launch these, uh, uh, rather the rockets that launch these satellites, and I was amazed at how big they are. Um, just colossal. And before that, I knew very little about JAXA, so I'm hoping today that our two speakers will be able to give us some uh, background on what is happening, but especially, of course, about uh, Hayabusa 2, um, which I think Japan is the leader in uh, this kind of space probe, this kind of space exploration. So let me introduce very briefly our two speakers. Uh, Dr. Uh, Hitoshi Kuninaka. Uh, he's the Vice President, Director General of JAXA Institute of Space and uh, Astronaut Astronautical Science. Um, I think you all have his resume or you've seen some of the background, so I won't go into that. And then further on, we have Dr. Makoto Yoshikawa. He's the Asso Associate Professor, Mission Manager of Hayabusa 2 Project Team. So thank you, gentlemen, for coming, and let's get into it. We only have about 10 minutes for each of the two talks, and then we have about 40 minutes for Q&A. So we'll get right into it now. Thank you. So would you begin? OK. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Hitoshi Kuninaka, uh, Director General of the Awa Institute. Uh, it's my great honor to have an opportunity to speak uh, at the Foreign Correspondent Club. And uh, uh, first of all, I would like to explain new the uh, our space program, uh, especially the uh, solar system exploration program. Uh, but the, uh, today's main topic is the Hayabusa 2, so that the, after that, uh, after my presentation, uh, Dr. Yoshikawa uh, please exp uh, will present you the uh, outline on a briefly of the uh, Hayabusa 2 missions. And then so, but, uh, uh, Hayabusa 2 is our, uh, one of the uh, space assets. Uh, I would like to explain you the, uh, our solar system exo exp exploration program. Uh, first pages, uh, this uh, page shows you the uh, uh, artist image of deep space, uh, JAXA's deep space fleet. Uh, in the next decade of 2020s, we will send a lot of spacecraft to the the, uh, to our solar system. And it, uh, using a swarm of spacecraft, we will investigate the uh, history of solar system and the origin of life. And then, so, uh, so next page is show you the uh, outline of the Hayabusa and the Hayabusa 2. So uh, before the Hayabusa 2 mission, uh, we executed the uh, Hayabusa asteroid sample return mission, uh, which was launched at the 2003, and then it came back to us 2010 uh, after the seven years space flight. And then so uh, retrieved uh, reentry vehicle uh, contains the uh, asteroid material, and then uh, that uh, which is devoted to the uh, scientific investigation now. And uh, 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 based on the, uh, our achievement of Hayabusa, original Hayabusa mission, uh, we studied the uh, development of Hayabusa 2 mission, uh, which uh, aimed to the another uh, asteroid. And then, so, uh, and then so, original Hayabusa mission, uh, I, I was an engineer. I participated in, in this program as an engineer of ion engine system. And then so, I, uh, and then so uh, that uh, ion engine is the main propulsion system of Hayabusa mission. And then so our next program, Hayabusa 2, uh, I was a project manager of this pro, uh, project, project. And then so uh, we succeeded to the launch uh, this system 
on 2014. And then using the ION engine, uh, it takes the uh, outbound mission from Earth to target asteroid Ryugu using the ION engine 3.5 years, uh, during 3.5 years. And then uh, last month, uh, Hayabusa 2 have just arrived at the target asteroid Ryugu. So next uh, page show you the uh, our uh, explore, exploring the uh, asteroid. Left hand side is the uh, asteroid Itokawa, uh, which Hayabusa one uh, visited. In the uh, right right hand side is the uh, asteroid Ryugu, new new asteroid. Uh, now Hayabusa two is the exploring. Uh, asteroid Ryugu. So detailed uh, uh, mission will be explained by uh, Dr. Yoshikawa. So, uh, uh, so this uh, uh, computer graphic shows you the uh, briefly uh, mission of Hayabusa 2. So now, uh, now we are executing the uh, remote sensing to observe the uh, target asteroid, and then we will decide the uh, landing position. And then, so uh, uh, first of all, we drop the target marker, and the spacecraft take the uh, touchdown operation automatically. And then, so at the moment, at the moment of touchdown, uh, we will collect the uh, surface material, and then so uh, it we will take the uh, lift up from the surface of the uh, uh, Ryugu. And then uh, we plan the another operation that is impact experiment. So a small object uh, will be released from the bottom side of the spacecraft, and then uh, main spacecraft takes the uh, escape maneuver to go to the another side of the uh, asteroid uh, in order to avoid uh, fragment uh, impact. And then several tens of minutes later, uh, impact will explode automatically. And then so accelerated bullet uh, will make a new crater on the surface of the, the asteroid. And then so after that, the uh, spacecraft come back to the original position, and then uh, it will take the uh, uh, material scattered from the uh, vicinity of the new craters. So that is the uh, uh, technique to catch up the uh, new material, fresh material, uh, under the ground. So this is a briefly uh, explanation of the uh, whole of the uh, space mission of Hayabusa 2. And then so after the uh, 2000, uh, uh, and then pro uh, after the proximity operation, uh, it will really come back to Asana again, and then so uh, uh, return operation will be uh, executed the, uh, at the end of 2020. Uh, this, and that uh, I have already explained to you, Hayabusa 2 is uh, our one of the space assets. Uh, we will deliver a lot of the spacecraft to the solar system, one by one. And, uh, and uh, after that, uh, from now on, I will ex explain to you the, uh, some of our new space missions, future space missions. So that is the uh, Beppi Colombo mission. Uh, this uh, October, we have, we have an, another uh, launch campaign, uh, Beppi Colombo mission, uh, which is the uh, ESA, ESA is the uh, European Space Agency, the uh, ESA led mission. Uh, JAXA provide uh, MMO, Mercury Magnet Spheric Orbiter. Uh, to ESA, a nickname is MIO. Uh, it will start the uh, launch campaign to go to uh, Mercury. Next one, another, uh, next one is the SRIM, pinpoint landing mission on the surface of the moon. Uh, we call SRIM. Uh, we are now uh, developing the uh, SRIM spacecraft, uh, which will be launched around 2020. Third one is the MMX Martian Moon Exploration Program. Uh, we are now planning to uh, go to uh, Martian Moon, uh, Phobos or Deimos. Uh, and then so uh, we would like to uh, sample return, uh, another sample return from the uh, uh, Martian Moon. Uh, it will be launched around the 2024. Uh, another one is the Destiny Plus mission. Uh, this is the asteroid flyby mission. 
uh, now we are proposing uh, this mission to Japanese government, uh, and it, it will be launched around 2022. Uh, this spacecraft will explore the uh, uh, one of the asteroid Phaeton, another asteroid. And so uh, uh, JAXA uh, space exploration program, uh, we are focusing on the uh, minor body exploration. So it means, you may know, uh, in the solar system, we have a lot of the planet. For example, the uh, vicinity of the sun, uh, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Uh, they are rocky planet. And then, so, uh, And then in the outer solar system, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune are the icy world. Uh, on Earth, you know there are water and uh, atmosphere, but in the beginning of Earth, these volatile material never existed. After formation of rocky Earth, water and the gaseous material might be convoyed from the uh, icy world by asteroid, comets, and cosmic dust. And then they, these material may contain organic material, uh, for example, uh, amin uh, amino acid, uh, which are origin of life on space, on, on Earth. These are the, uh, our uh, space exploration program, uh, outline of uh, our uh, future missions. Then, so uh, I, I will hand over to the, uh, Dr. Yoshikawa. Okay. <clears throat> uh, my name is Makoto Yoshikawa, uh, mission manager of Hives 2 project. I am very happy to be here uh, to talk about the, uh, this uh, mission, Hayabusa 2. Okay, so let's move on to the next page. So uh, this page shows the Japan's asteroid explorations. The starting point is 1985. Uh, at this time, uh, we had a discussion about the asteroid sampling mission uh, very long ago. And then uh, we uh, had Hayabusa mission uh, from 2003, and now we are operating Hayabusa 2. So in future, uh, as Director Klinaka already told, uh, we, will ha we want to uh, have uh, other missions such as uh, Trojan asteroid mission or any flyby mission. And the important point is uh, Hayabusa, the target asteroid Itokawa, which is S-type asteroid. So uh, the component is stone. However, the target of Hypsa 2, it is a C-type asteroid, which means uh, C-type asteroid has, a, uh, has a organic matter or water. So our science target of Hypsa 2 is to study organic matter in the solar system. So now I talk about the uh, technology of some little mission. So we, JAXA, uh, uh, had developed a lot of new technologies for asteroid sampling mission. For example, for Hayabusa, uh, we developed ion engine, autonomous navigation, uh, sample correction system, and a reentry capsule. Also, for Hayabusa 2, uh, the new technology was impactor system and a K-band communication system. And also, if we, we will do another mission, we must develop many new technologies. So uh, this is a Hayabusa 2 spacecraft. Uh, it is not so big. The size, the body size is just a uh, one meter by 1.6 meters. So the body size very small. And uh, the mass of Hayabusa 2 is just uh, 600 kilogram. So it is not so big. But uh, it has a uh, lot of uh, payloads. Uh, you, you can see uh, up, uh, upper part, you can see the uh, four science instruments. Uh, OMCT, this is a, a CCD camera, LiDAR, uh, this is a laser altimeter. Uh, uh, laser altimeter uh, measures distance between the spacecraft and the asteroid. And the NIRS-3, this is a near-infrared spectrometer. So by NIRS-3, uh, we, 
will fa find uh, the material which have uh, water in it. And uh, finally, TIR. This is a thermal measure. So by TIR, we can measure the temperature of the surface of asteroid. And uh, in the below of this slide, you can see four small land and rovers. One is a mascot, uh, which was developed by the uh, uh, DLR and CNES. And uh, the other three is uh, Minerva 2, which is a very small rover. So Hayabusa 2 has uh, lots of instruments like this. So now I quickly talk about the uh, technology of Hayabusa 2. So Hayabusa 2 uh, was based on the original Hayabusa, but uh, we modified a lot of things. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, we changed the uh, high gain antenna, the large antenna. Hay Hayabusa has only one high gain antenna, uh, which is used for the which was used for the X-band communication. But Hayabusa 2 uh, has two uh, planar high-end antenna. Uh, one is for the X-band, the other one is for the K-band. If we use K-band, uh, K-band, we can uh, communicate much faster. And the uh, second thing is we modified I-O engine. Uh, Hayabusa, in Hayabusa, I-O engine had some troubles. But uh, Hypsa 2, we modified it. So up to, up to now, uh, the IO engine of Hypsa 2 worked quite well. And then, the uh, uh, new thing is a uh, small lander uh, mascot uh, for Hypsa 2. And uh, also, uh, we uh, changed the attitude uh, control system uh, in Hayabusa 2, uh, because uh, Hayabusa, uh, we had a trouble in attitude control system. And uh, also in the next page, uh, another other uh, modified point uh, is shown. Uh, the new thing is the impactor, uh, which will create new crater on the surface of the asteroid. And uh, we uh, changed science instruments, and also uh, uh, we changed uh, thruster system too. So like this, Hayabusa 2, uh, the technology of Hayabusa 2 is based on the Hayabusa, but uh, we modified many parts. Okay, so let me talk a uh, little bit in detail, detail things for technology. Uh, one is this uplink transfer. So uh, the Earth is uh, spinning in 24 hours. So from one station, we can communicate only, for example, eight hours. So if we need, for example, 24-hour uh, communication, uh, we need an uh, antenna in, in abroad. But usually, uh, we must stop communication when we change the antenna. But uh, this new technology, uplink transfer, we do not have to stop the communication even if we change the antenna uh, from Japan to abroad. So uh, we, we were successful for this uh, technique. And next one is DDOR. This is very uh, 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 special method. Uh, if we use two antenna uh, to communicate uh, to the spacecraft, with the spacecraft, then uh, we can determine its orbit quite precisely. And like this, we use the antenna in Japan and Australia, or Japan in the United States, or Japan and, in, and Europe. Then uh, we can determine the uh, position of spacecraft very precisely. So this technique is also uh, successful. Ah, hey. And then this is a K-band communication. So uh, this is also another interesting. But uh, I, quick, I skip this. And now uh, I talk about the uh, science issue. So uh, we already uh, studied Itokawa, and uh, we, we knew a lot of things for the uh, formation of uh, planets. So now uh, we, will start, we have started uh, the uh, observation of Ryugu, and uh, Ryugu is very interesting uh, uh, asteroid, and uh, uh, I will talk about this in later. Anyway, the uh, purpose of this mission is to study, to, to know the origin of the solar system. 
uh, we know that uh, solar system was born about 4.6 billion years ago. So we want to know, we want to get the material uh, in the, in the uh, when the solar system was born. And uh, uh, this is a, a quick outline of uh, IPS2 mission. Uh, it was launched in 2014, and now, uh, just uh, last month, uh, IPS2 arrived its target asteroid, uh, Ryugu. And uh, now uh, it has started uh, exp exploration, and uh, IPS2 will stay near uh, this asteroid uh, one and a half year. And uh, at the end of next year, it will start from Ryugu, and uh, it will come ba back to the Earth at the end of 2020. Yes, and this is a tra trajectory, but uh, I skipped this. And uh, uh, this is a, uh, a mission schedule uh, from now on. So now spacecraft is uh, near, the, near the Ryugu, about 20 kilometers uh, from the surface. But uh, actually, this week, uh, the distance from the uh, asteroid uh, becoming uh, smaller and smaller. Now uh, spacecraft is approaching uh, to Ryugu up to five uh, kilometers in this week. And, uh, at the end of this month, or next, beginning of next month, uh, again, a spacecraft approach to Ryugu to study the surface uh, in detail. And uh, in September, uh, we will release a small lander or rover. And uh, in December, uh, in October, sorry, in October, uh, Hayabusa 2 will uh, execute first touchdown. And uh, in next year, we will have another uh, two touchdowns. And uh, also in, in the spring of next year, uh, we will do the experiment to create a small crater on the surface. OK, and uh, Hypsa 2 is a collaboration uh, with uh, USA NASA. And also, uh, we had a good collaboration with Euro Europe, DL and CNES. OK, so uh, this is uh, uh, Ryugu. Uh, Astro Ryugu, very uh, strange and interesting one. At first, uh, when we saw this uh, image, uh, we were very surprised because the shape is uh, spinning top shape. We never, we did not uh, imagine uh, such shape. Uh, we, we knew there are some asteroids whose shape is like this, but uh, always the spin period is very fast. For example, uh, two hours or four hours. But uh, Ryugu, the spin period is slow, about 7.6 hours. So we did not expect such shape. And you can see uh, lots of big or small craters and uh, lots of boulders, uh, very big uh, uh, rocks on the surface. So from science, this asteroid is very uh, interesting. And uh, this is a, a 3D uh, image. Uh, uh, if you have a, a blue and a red glass, you can see uh, this in, in a 3D shape. Okay, so finally, this is a color image of Yugu. Uh, actually, this is a very dark uh, one because the component, it has a component of uh, carbon. So now we have just started to study this Ryugu, and then, uh, uh, and I think we will have a very interesting result in, in near future. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Okay, thank you very much. Um, before we begin Q and A, I'd like to make some. I'd like to ask for clarifications. In the uplink transfer page, you see, you, you note station A, station B, and I think you mentioned another one. So, uh, so are these stations in different countries? Is one in uh, Australia? Yes? Right, yes. And, uh, and another in Europe? Europe and, uh, and the United States. Okay, so that will give you 24 hour communication? I see, good, thanks very much. Right, let's open it to Q&A then. First, we'll begin with the working press. Uh, is there anybody from the working press here besides me? 
Okay, in that case, let's open it to the whole uh, attendees. Who would like to ask the first question? Okay, while you, yes. Would you please introduce yourself and uh, give your, uh, the, the, your, your, the place of work? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, my name is Kurt Sieber, I'm an associate member. Thank you very much for your presentation. It really opens the eyes of people like me who have no idea about what is really going on in space. So thank you very much for that. My specific question is, could you give us an outline of how this ION uh, engine is working? Because that seems to be one of the basic technology in your systems. Thank you so much. OK, I, I, I'd like to uh, explain you. Uh, I'd like to. Uh, uh. Respond, respond you. So our uh, uh, propulsion, space propulsion system, so that the uh, uh, established system is a chemical propulsion, we call chemical propulsion. And then so uh, uh, hi uh, hydrogen and oxygen is a mixture, is ex explored. And then so it generates a high, high temperature, and then we, we will exhaust high velocity uh, jet, jet propulsion. So that is a conventional system. But the, uh, that, so, uh, in the chemical propulsion system is not effective. And then so uh, we want to make a much faster uh, jet speed. So in that uh, uh, situation, we need electric propulsion system. So one of the electric propulsion is ion engine. Uh, and uh, you may know uh, plasma includes the uh, ion, uh, charged ion. And then so uh, we apply uh, uh, high voltage, and then so we will accelerate ions to the high velocity over 30 kilometer per second. And then so uh, such kind of the very high jet uh, speed uh, accelerate spacecraft very effectively. And then so uh, uh, Dr. Yoshikawa have already explained you, Hayabusa is a very tiny spacecraft, only 500 kilogram and 600 kilogram. It contains the, uh, about 60 kilogram propellant gas. Only such a uh, large, a small amount of propellant gas, so Hayabusa has the possibility to reach to the one of the asteroid and another uh, capacity to come back to uh, from asteroid to us, uh, it, it has a, a large uh, acceleration capacity uh, if we use ion engine system. Could I clarify again? Did you say 30 kilometers a second? Wow. And how many, uh, how many kilos, kilos of propulsion gas? So uh, in Hayabusa 1 and 2, so it, it, has, it will use the, uh, about 60 about kilograms. 60 Only kilograms. 10% of the uh, total mm. spacecraft. Great, thank the you. Conventional chemical propulsion can generate five kilo, only 5 kilometer per second. Mm. In that sense, the uh, ion engine can generate much faster uh, jet propulsion. Okay, great, thank you very much. If you're still thinking about other questions, I'm going to ask a question, so please get your mind ticking over there. Um, I understand there will be three robot rovers introduced on the asteroid and also uh, a lander. Could you give us an outline of what these uh, robots will do, how they differ, and how are they energized? Where, where is the power coming from? Whoever would like to answer, please do. Yes. So, uh, Hayabusa 2 has one lander, we, uh, which is called mascot. And uh, uh, this is about 10 kilograms in mass. And, and uh, uh, it will be released, and then it will stay on the surface. And the uh, mascot lander has four science instruments. Uh, one is a camera, uh, the other one is a, a, a infrared spectrum, infrared uh, infrared spectrometer, but uh, uh, micros microscopic infrared spectrometer, and then a magnetometer and a, a thermometer. So uh, mascot uh, can detect the such kind of data on the surface, and uh, and mascot can move once. So 
uh, at first it stay one part, then it can hop to about uh, 10 or 20 meters away, and then again it can uh, uh, get the data. So uh, and the operation time is maybe uh, less than one day, very short. But uh, uh, and mascot is uh, working by battery, so uh, battery can could not last more than one one day. Mm -hmm. What, what yeah. kind of batteries? What kind of batteries? Uh, ah. You can get back to me on that if you like. Yes, yes. I, I can check it. Yes, yes. thank you. P please continue. Yes, and uh, the other three, uh, Minerva 2, uh, ori uh, the original Hayabusa has one small rover, Minerva, but uh, we were failed to put it on the surface of Itokawa. And this time we have three uh, small rover, Minerva 2, and uh, these three uh, small rover uh, also uh, put on the surface, but uh, it, it can hop and uh, uh, it can move uh, from one place to the other by hopping. By hopping? Yes, right. Uh, what, what is the mechanism for hopping? Uh, yes, uh, it doesn't have a, uh, a leg, but uh, in, inside it has, it has a weight, and uh, the weight uh, is uh, uh, rotate, rotated by a motor. Mm. Then uh, it can hop. So gravitational field is very, very low. Oh, so right, that right. The, uh, uh, so uh, uh, tire and hoyu is not effective. So mm. that the uh, in internal uh, mechanisms, it has the uh, re reaction hoyu, and then so that the, uh, it rotates inside, and then so that the counter force is generated the hopping, hopping, hopping reactions. So not rolling, but actually a hop, like yes, this, that's like right. a kangaroo. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. Yes, and uh, Minerva 2 uh, have a small camera, so it can uh, get the surface uh, image. And also, it, I think it can take the temperature of surface. It, it, okay, uh, they are you. powered by the solar, so, uh, solar cells. I'm sorry? Uh, uh, they are powered by solar cells. Uh, powered by solar cells. So they cannot uh, operate for, okay. for so many days? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. And then see uh, another information. A mascot uh, was developed by the uh, DLR German Aerospace Agency and the uh, Kunes Europe uh, French uh, Space in, uh, Agency. And then so Minerva was uh, developed by uh, in, in Japan, so JAXA and uh, uh, collaboration with university. OK. And also the German, a German space group as well? The mascot? Uh, uh, we call DLR. Uh, D OK. Any more questions, please? OK, again, while you're thinking, please do think. Um, we have this great opportunity here. Um, please tell us some more about um, how many times will the um, Hayabusa 2 actually land? And, and why, is, why is that necessary? Why, why do you land and then take off and land again? Is that to go to a different part? You cut because it can't move? If you could just explain a little bit, thank you. Yes, so in, in our plan, uh, Hyperstar 2 can land uh, three times. Mm -hmm. So first one is uh, this in this October. And uh, of course, uh, this is very important. We want to get the surface material. And then uh, maybe in the February next year, uh, second touchdown will be done. Uh, we want to get the material from different place. And of course, uh, material take, took, taken was uh, put in the separate room. They, they were not mixture, mixed. And then uh, next spring, uh, we will do the uh, impact operation, uh, which means we will create a small crater on the surface. And then uh, helps us to land in the crater to get the subsurface material. So uh, in, to in total, uh, Hyperstar 2 can touch down three, three times and uh, three different places. Mm. So you, you will actually land in the crater itself? Uh, y y y y we hope that's, that's, that's the plan, yes. 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 That's the plan. It, isn't that very difficult? I mean, given that it's 
not going to be level. Yes, that is a very difficult. So that the present state, uh, we, we don't know exact size of the new crater. And then so that yeah, we try to touch down on the vicinity of new crater. So uh, this is the reason uh, how do we execute the, uh, such kind of operation. And the, uh, our uh, experience of the uh, Hayabusa 1 mission, uh, we identify the uh, space, uh, space weathering effect. So that the surface material is uh, affected by the uh, space weathering effect. And then so that the uh, surface material is uh, chemically uh, situ uh, sit uh, changes in the chemical situation. And then so that, so due to the uh, uh, long time Exposure to the uh, solar wind, wow. and then so that yeah, we want to we want to have uh, new material, uh, fresh material, so inside of the under the ground, so that the, in order to dig or uh, expose internal material, then we try to execute the impact operation yes. to make a new crater. To make a new crater, yeah. wow, very um, ambitious. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> very true. ambitious. Yes. Yes, please. I'm glad you came. <laughs> Once more, Kurt Sieber, I'm an associate member here. Thank you for coming. Um, how do you protect the Hayabusa 2 when it comes back to the Earth uh, and re-enters the atmosphere and will be exposed to very, very high temperatures? Thank you. Yeah, that is a very good question. <laughs> so uh, Hayabusa 2 and the Hayabusa 1 and 2 installed the uh, uh, re-entry vehicle. So we call it a sample re uh, return capsule. So that the uh, several hours before the uh, uh, coming to Earth, so mother ship spacecraft will separate, release the uh, re-entry vehicle. And then so final moment, only the re-entry uh, re vehicle can adapt such kind of the high temperature uh, situation in the atmosphere. And then so finally, uh, uh, re-entry vehicle will be decelerate in the atmosphere. And finally, it will deploy the parachute in the uh, high altitude. And then so it will take the uh, uh, soft landing on the surface of the Earth. And the main spacecraft or uh, we'll take the uh, escape maneuver after the uh, uh, separation of the uh, uh, re-entry vehicle, and then uh, spacecraft will goes to uh, goes up to the uh, deep space again. But the uh, original Hayabusa 1 mission, we have a lot of troubles, and then so we cannot execute the escape maneuver, and then so that the whole of spacecraft and the uh, re-entry vehicle take the uh, uh, dived in Earth's atmosphere. And then so mother ship was completely uh, uh, destroyed in the uh, high, high altitude. And then unfortunately, uh, only the re-entry vehicle executed the uh, safety touchdown on the surface of the, the Earth, or, uh, Australia desert. And then so uh, next mission, that is Hayabusa 2, uh, we want to take the uh, escape maneuver after the uh, separation of the, of the uh, re-entry vehicle. And that will be in Australia too? Uh, President Seiti is now we are, are trying to do at the Australian again. So the plan, the plan is yes, for Australia? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, if, if I connect my computer, I can show you the Hayabusa. I'm sorry, could you speak into yes. my uh, Yes, if I connect my computer here, I can show you the Hayabusa reentry video. Okay. Can, can I? So we have an, an uh, exact uh, video image of oh, the uh, yes. uh, at, at yes, the moment please. of the uh, Hayabusa one yeah. uh, reentry operation. Yes, please do. Yes.
Yes, this is a, a Hayabusa reentry scene. And you can see small dot uh, down, downward. That is a capsule. And uh, Hayabusa, two, Hayabusa itself is uh, like this, uh, uh, completely melted. So unfortunately, Hayabusa original mission, uh, we lost the uh, uh, mother ship in, in the uh, atmosphere. But the, uh, uh, in the Hayabusa 2 case, uh, after, uh, we will take the escape maneuver so that the, uh, it, uh, we expect Hayabusa 2 uh, mother ship uh, will, uh, arrive, <laughs> will arrive at the, uh, uh, in space. Yes, uh, we, we finished the uh, video image. So again, I'd like to clarify, I'm not sure if I understand. So this was Hayabusa 1. Yes, that's okay. right. Okay, and we saw the, the craft and then the, the capsule separated. Yes. And the craft itself, what, burnt up in the atmosphere? That's right. But the plan, original plan was to send it out into deep space? Yes. I see. Now with a Hayabusa 2, what is the plan? Is, is it the, also to send the craft yes, into deep yes, space? Yes, that's right. Okay, that's right. I see. But the capsule itself, well, you only, will... Only capsule, it will by, come back to us. I see, by parachute, creating a soft landing, possibly in Australia. Yes. Okay, great. More questions, please? Yes, great. Thank you. Please come up to the microphone and tell us who you are and who you work for. Thank you. My name is Ocean and I'm an intern at AFP. Uh, I just have a few questions. So with the uh, Hayabusa 1, you said the engine got destroyed when it uh, went to the Earth. And did you, like, were you able to uh, recuperate the samples that you picked from uh, the, like, that the engine picked from uh, the asteroid. And also, I had a question on the schedule. You said that in uh, 2018, in November and December, the communication would be unavailable uh, with the um, Hayabusa 2. And so I wanted to know what does that mean for, uh, the, for Hayabusa 2, and how are you going to keep uh, like, be making sure that no problems occurs if you cannot uh, check with the engine? Thank you. Yes, so... So your uh, question is uh, this one. In November, December, the communication uh, uh, will stop. This is because uh, uh, from the Earth, uh, Hayabusa 2 locates near the sun. And the sun, uh, uh, so the, uh, the radio wave uh, from Hayabusa 2 is very, uh, very weak. So when, and the sun is a very strong radio source. So uh, we cannot communicate with the uh, Hayabusa 2 spacecraft. So, uh, but uh, uh, in fact, uh, we, uh, the communication does not stop. Uh, we can communicate, but uh, we do not do the uh, critical operation in this period. Just uh, uh, watching Hayabusa 2 is go away from the sun. Okay? Yes. Maybe uh, your first question is... Uh, Mm -hmm. that got destroyed, and did you pick up some samples from the asteroid, and did you succeed to Sorry, this is quite long. Could you come to the microphone, because this is being recorded, <laughs> and I can't hear you, sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. So, yeah, my first question was uh, on the first uh, engine that you sent, Ayabusa 1, mm -hmm. uh, if I'm correct. So it got destroyed when it went back to the Earth. Is that it? Okay, and I thought that it was uh, supposed to recuperate some samples from the asteroid. And I wonder, since it got destroyed, uh, did you recuperate the uh, samples from the asteroid? Or, uh, yes. or did it get lost? Or <laughs> what happened? Ah, OK. So uh, I have the one. Uh, 
uh, the, the military capsule was successful. Okay. So uh, before Hayabusa uh, burned in the, in, in the atmosphere, the uh, reentry capsule was released. And we can uh, get, the, we, we were able to uh, have the reentry capsule. So inside the capsule, we, we, uh, there are lots of grains from Itokawa. Okay. So we have Itokawa's water deal. All right. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. More questions, please? Yes, please. My name is Kuniko Isa, ISA, not uh, ESA. <laughs> Isa, a uh, uh, freelance uh, journalist. I uh, uh, really, really moved uh, to have you both. Thank you very much today. And uh, I have a few, few questions. One is that uh, both uh, professors uh, mentioned our uh, Ryugu, uh, Ryugu is uh, one of the most interesting uh, <laughs> planet. Uh, may I ask uh, in what way? That is the first one. And the second question is that uh, as the uplink transfer uh, technology testing, uh, there's uh, some, uh, as far as I know, there's some spot for uh, what is a Perhaps a parabola antenna in Usuda. I'm so curious about uh, the function and the uh, mission. Perhaps uh, it's uh, listening to the uh, voice from uh, outer space. <laughs> uh, could you explain that to our uh, two questions? One is uh, what. Uh, in what way are uh, uh, no Ryugu, uh, Ryugu is the interesting uh, planet, and the second one is the function of uh, uh, us Usuda parabola antenna. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you for your question. <laughs> and uh, yes, at first the Ryugu, I, I, I show you again the photo of Ryugu. This, this one. So, uh, Ryugu, uh, uh, the size of Ryugu is just uh, uh, 900 meters, very small. But uh, in this case, uh, the shape is uh, spinning top shape. And, and this is a very interesting, in interesting thing, because uh, if uh, asteroid spinning very fast, then the shape bec uh, will become like this. But uh, in this case, the Ryugu's spin period, rotation period is not so fast. There is uh, actually uh, uh, not so fast. So uh, we do, don't know why uh, uh, Ryugu has such shape. So maybe if we understand this, we can uh, know how Ryugu was born. So this is a very important part. and. Uh, and much more impo interesting thing is the material uh, of Ryugu. Uh, as I showed this photo, uh, Ryugu is very dark. Uh, the color of Ryugu is uh, very close to black. And this is because it has uh, lots of uh, carbon material. So carbon related to organic matter. So if we get the sample and uh, uh, we analyze it, then uh, we may find a lot of organic matters. Maybe, I don't know, but maybe. So uh, very interesting is what kind of organic matter is uh, on Ryugu. This is very important uh, thing because uh, we think Ryugu, the material of Ryugu is very close to the, the material at the time of solar system born. So this is before uh, Earth's life started. So we think uh, if, we, if we can find some organic matter uh, from the sample of Ryugu, it may be the original material that will, make be, that will be a, a life on the Earth. So this, this point, this is a very important 
uh, science, science topic. Yeah. And the second question is Usuda. Yes, uh, we always use. Yes, yes, that's yes right. right. So in Usuda, uh, there is a large uh, parabolic antenna, and the diameter is uh, 64 meters, very big, the uh, largest one in Japan. And uh, we, every day, we use Usuda antenna to communicate with Hayabusa 2. And, and, and uh, so uh, for the uh, deep space communication, uh, uh, we use the two antenna. One is Usuda, uh, 64 meter diameter. Another one is the Kagoshima uh, Uchinoura antenna, uh, 34 meters. And then so, uh, and the, but the, uh, especially Usuda antenna uh, was constructed 35 years ago, very old, old one. And then so now we are making the new antenna vicinity of Usuda. Uh, we call the Misasa antenna. Uh, uh, it will be uh, accomplished the, uh, uh, next year, 2019. Oh, oh, okay, I'd like to ask a question now. Um, there was a problem with uh, Hayabusa 1 in the mechanism that was supposed to collect surface material. Um, in Hayabusa 2, how does that work? Does something come from the actual spacecraft and pick up Earth? Or please give us some idea of how you are going to collect um, surface material and, bring, and put it into the capsule. <laughs> So Hayabusa, uh, you, uh, so uh, in the bottom bay of the Hayabusa, we have a uh, horn, in, uh, uh, and then so at the, touch, at the moment of touchdown, uh, we will uh, uh, contact the uh, tip of the horn to, to the surface of the uh, asteroid. Horn. horn. Oh, yes, horn. Yes. A nozzle and a horn, and then so that the uh, as that uh, as that touchdown uh, at the moment of the touchdown, we shoot the uh, small bullet or a pist uh, just like pistol, and then so that the uh, we uh, destroy the surface material, and then so a small fragment will goes up uh, under the low gravitational field, and then so horn uh, gather the uh, uh, up upcoming the fro small fragment. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is the exact, exact uh, artist image, C mm -hmm. CG. So uh, from now on, spacecraft will take the uh, touchdown operation, and then nozzle, tip of the nozzle horn uh, touch the surface of the asteroid surface, and then as at, at this moment, we shoot the uh, small projectile to the surface of the uh, asteroid, and then so uh, a small fragment will, uh, will, will be catched by the horn. I have some mm -hmm. So the uh, horn is what, on the outside of yes. the craft? Yes, outside okay. of the spacecraft. Does, does it come out when you land? Um, is it there all the time, or is, does it come out at the point of landing? Yes, yeah. yeah. It, w which, is, is, it, is it always outside, the horn? Yes, or, or, uh, uh, yes b before the launch, in the rocket, in rocket launching, so uh, horn is stored. Oh, it's, and it's stored inside. Stored. And okay. then so after the deployment of the spacecraft from the okay. rocket, and then we extended the horn. I see, thank you. Any more questions? <laughs> so uh, now you can see the how to get the sample. Uh, 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 after this. <laughs> uh, 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 this is a Minerva release uh, uh, for Hyperza 1. These are the rovers? Yes. Yes. Yeah. But in this case, it was failure. So now this is a sampling method. The horn? That's the horn? Yes, yes. yes. Oh, I see. So it's the actual middle part that touches the surface. Yes, yes, yeah. that's right. Mm -hmm. So it's huge. I mean, in, in relatively speaking, uh, it's really large. Uh, I yeah. see. And these robots are actually, th they're just thrown out in a sense. Yes. And, and then roll and 
Uh, yeah, yes. Stuff. And oh. then so uh, inside in, inside the rover, we have a uh, reaction for you, and then so automatically hop hop. Hop hop. Yeah. Hop. Wow. Okay. And this is the capsule. Yeah, the entry yeah. operation. <laughs> How are you able to guide? The parachute, so that you can, you know where the location is. Is there? Do you know, or you just hope? It's uh, we be we, in the we will search the uh, uh, capsule from the ground gr using the gr ground facility. Ah, you can actually guide the capsule. Yes. Even while it's parachuting, I see. Could you tell us uh, what is the um, budget that you've been given to to make Hayabusa possible? Uh, yeah, uh, in the case of the Hayabusa, or ori original Hayabusa, yes. it is the two about the uh, 250 million dollars. And uh, in the case of the Hayabusa 2, it is 300 million dollars, mm. including the uh, launch lo launching rocket system. Including rockets. We're approaching the end, so this is your last chance, guys, uh, to ask a question. No? All right, well, I think we'll end it then in that case. I'd like to thank both our guests here for giving us so much valuable information about Hayabusa 2 and about JAXA in general. And before we actually end, uh, it's the tradition in the club, the Foreign Correspondents Club, to um, oh. <laughs> present you here. Yes. A temporary membership. Thank right. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, uh, I, I, finally, I would like to say uh, from now on, uh, we will start the uh, Hayabusa 2 uh, proximity operation. It is very important and very difficult space missions. And then, so, uh, I would like to ask all of you, all of you, uh, please pray Hayabusa 2 uh, for the Hayabusa 2 good luck. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.